All right. Hello, Worlds Collide community, and welcome to our weekly community race. We have uh, four very talented runners running a what's supposed to be a very spicy seed this evening, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the stream is brought to you by Brianna Fofana. Uh, the Schwantz, our excellent tracker, and uh, I'm Fantastodon. Joining me is Mega Man in the comms booth. Mega Man, what are we looking forward to this evening? Um, well, looking at this flag set here, it, it does look like we are going to have some really nice spice. I hope so. I haven't uh, looked too deeply into the, um, you know, spoiler log, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, we've got... Uh, Four of our talented runners, we've got uh, Jolly Green Ray, Shadow Sid, Green Monkey, and Jackamus Wedge. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's mostly standard flags, so it'll be the classic uh, seven, ten requirements, seven characters, ten espers, a few uh, minor tweaks to make this more interesting. There are no elemental rods in shops. In fact, shops themselves are uh, random tiered. I personally do not know how the random tiering work. I suspect no one actually does. But uh, in my experience, random tiered shops means kind of crummy shops. So we'll see uh, if our runners get lucky. Well, I think what it means is, is this shop is super amazing. It has all the good stuff, but, but this shop... It's absolute garbage. That that is the nature of randomness. But we'll see how it goes. We've got our uh, runners on screen. We have Sid and Jack using the same background. But uh, looking forward to getting this started in a little bit. Something uh, I enjoy about the standard flags. Uh, is that you only start with two characters, so the early game is is very precarious, and obviously a lot depends on who those two characters are. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how our runners tackle the early game. Uh, one other thing to mention, uh, there are no rods, there's also no Illumina swords. Apparently our uh, Restreamer Brianna thought Illuminas are just just too OP for our runners this evening, so uh, take that out of the pool. Anything else we should uh, keep an eye on, Mega Man? Um, not really, other than start. The all-important start, yes indeed. Always interesting to see how these these talented racers uh, start their race, what checks they do first. Um, obviously so much depends on the characters themselves, but uh, I know checking uh, Narsh at the start, very popular, obviously Returner's Hideout, uh, an excellent uh, early location, and of course the South Figaro's, etc. But uh, looking forward to seeing what happens. Yes, I am. Well, I know we are uh, waiting a bit uh, to kick things off, to get uh, get people hopping in here in the channel. For all you uh, early arrivals in chat, I'm curious, what what character do you want to see first in your two-person party? Maybe a, a fun, uh, spicy Umaru Gogo start, or, uh, you know, best girl, or... Uh, <laughs> exactly, Gogo go. head straight to the troll cave. Face off against the hardest boss in the game, the conductors on the wooden bridges right at, right at the start. Get that over with. Did 
This is too long of a wait. This is giving me anxiety. <laughs> well, I think we are, uh... Possibly dealing with some very minor technical issues in the, uh, in the race stream before we get started. But, uh, I'm sure it'll be just a moment or two. Uh, in fact, we have received the two-minute warning... Now, it's possible this says more about me than it does about our runners, but uh, I feel like we've got a little bit of uh, new blood in the community stream tonight. Uh, I've seen uh, Sid and Jack before, but uh, Jolly Green Ray and Green Monkey are uh, a little bit of wild cards for me, so it'll be interesting to see how they perform in this uh, community race. Yeah, I am... I'm pretty sure this community has grown in a considerable amount since when I first joined. And, and, because just looking at the role, is there is only like a two restreamer. Or is only like six tracker and like five commentators but now there's like a, a double or even triple that amount and then plus some new ones yeah absolutely I mean that's that's the great part about uh, worlds collide you know we're still young and hungry still growing uh, Rihanna and, and Schwantz uh, helpfully pointing out uh, some info in chat but uh, absolutely love to see some new blood, love to see some fresh runners, um, and love to see people, you know, jumping into this, this fantastic game that, uh, we all enjoy so much. But we are just moments away from the start, and, uh, we'll see how, how our runners do. And I think we're off. Yep, so seems here so. we go. First peak. Ooh, Mog. Mog and, and Terra. Terra. What what does that say to you, man? Personally, Mega Man? I always thought Celeste was better, but to teach their own. Uh, you know that is a, a you're welcome to your opinion, but. Uh... Tara has earned the name Best Girl with the Worlds Collide community, I think, justifiably, in my opinion. Um, I believe she also has natural magic, which is a fantastic thing to see on Terra. Uh, Mog with his uh, vanilla dance ability. But, uh, you know, I'm sure these are they're intelligent runners, and uh, I love seeing runners get use out of some of the uh, less popular abilities, like, for example, dance. Early dance can, uh, can, you know, defeat some of the early fights, maybe knock off a boss, and, uh, can really help you out. Yeah. But, speaking of divergence, we have our four runners going in three different directions. Jack heading into the sealed cave, Green Monkey 
looking through Turners, and then Green Ray and Sid working through Narsh. Uh, Jack finding an early Thunder Shield. Always happy to see the Elemental Shields early in the seed. Probably one of the items, uh, or you know, group of items I'm, I'm most happy to see early on. They're just, the Elemental Shields, so powerful. Uh, incredible defense, and obviously in a pinch can be incredible offense. Yeah. As we see Green Monkey heading into South Figaro, Jolly Green Ray showing off our first shop. Um, again, random tiered shops. I, I will be the first to admit, I don't exactly know what that means, but in my experience, it means sort of crummy shops. But, uh, you know, item shops, hopefully the exception to that rule, there are only so many items, and uh, hopefully our runners get the full suite of... Ooh! That's a fun find. <laughs> Mega Man, what, what do we see on Jack's screen? Uh... That is, is a big throwy boy. It is. It is a big angry ape. It is the Yidi himself, Umaro. Um, probably not what Jack was hoping for, but uh, a character is a character, and uh, obviously got a, uh, a fair bit of loot from the very treasure-rich sealed cave, and uh, is our first two three characters as uh, our other three runners still doing uh, initial looting, have not completed a check yet. Looks like uh, Jack going through Albrook, another uh, fairly treasure-dense town to visit early on. Schwantz, our tremendous tracker, pointing out in chat what exactly random tier means, uh, means most shops will not be good, but one or two may be excellent. So it'll be interesting to see if our runners find those, uh, those juiced shops. Yes. That is the question indeed. Jolly Green going for that Swag Figaro item. Thunder Shield. Nice. Again, the, the Elemental Shield, so useful. Particularly, uh, something interesting in this seed, uh, no dragons are required to complete the seed, but uh, the dragons are unscaled, so they will not be uh, as easy to take down as they may be in a standard seed, oftentimes you'll see runners um, taking down a dragon or two uh, fairly low level just for the, the great reward of experience and a top tier item. But uh, there are no, no free dragons in this run. They are all going to be at their end game ability. Which is relatively hard. Uh, yes, they are, they are definitely endgame bosses, uh, but they are all, uh, they're all themed around a specific element, which again goes back to the elemental shields. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what level the red dragon is if you have a bunch of flame shields and uh, can fight it off. But uh, speaking of levels, looks like Jack is trying to take on a random encounter, finds from Prometheus, which is... Uh, not what you want to see. It can be a little tricky. He's got Jumper Mog already. Terra with the health ability he coming in helpful. Absolutely. This is a, this is a very, oof. I was going to say, it's a very kind Terra start, but uh, it doesn't matter when she gets 
one shot by Prometheus. Um, so that's a restart, but uh, yeah, g important to point out that uh, restart sets him back a little bit, but Jack does have a, a functional Dragoon build Mog already. Just needs a, a good Lance to, uh, to finish off the trifecta, but that is uh, good news for, for Jack and I'm sure for the other runners as they uh, stumble upon these treasures as well. Certainly, indeed. Thank you for Schwantz pointing out, he already has the Pearl Lance, uh, which is wild. We have a, a complete Dragoon build in under eight minutes. Uh, for, for those of us who are fans of the Jump Command, myself included, that is very exciting. Yes, Jump fans hyped. You, uh, you're a Dragoon stan, Mega Man? Yeah, I can be early game. Uh, I, I think it's fun. I think it's, uh, it's, it's fairly quick. It does a lot of damage. And, uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind is you can't be hurt if you're not on screen. So, uh, a jumper can avoid lots of nasty attacks as we see Jack cleaning up this random encounter. Green Monkey also purchasing a Pearl Lance. So, uh, looks like we're gonna see, uh, some jumps in this seed. As most of our runners are shopping in different towns, looks like Jack's going to take on another Terra check, the Welk Cave. We'll see what we find behind this. Uh, not a character, so will be an item or Esper, and it is Doom. That. That is a scary boy. And Umaro already eating the dirt. <laughs> yeah, Doom, one of these statue bosses, a, a uh, obviously endgame boss, extremely strong. Uh, I don't think Jack really has the, the elemental defense to weather these, these powerful ice attacks he's going to throw out. Uh, I guess he's going to be... Crossing his fingers and hoping Dragoon Mog can get the job done. <laughs> Meanwhile, we do yes. have two runners working through the sealed cave at the moment. Sid and Green Monkey are uh, working through these checks. We'll pick up some, some decent loot and we'll find, of course, a Yeti at the end of it. But uh, we'll see how Jack does against d -O, o m All we can do at this point in his hope and pray. Ooh, He's getting some pearl procs off that lance. Love to see that. Doing triple the amount of damage with just a normal stab. I know, well, you love to see a, a level six character putting out four digit damage. Doom goes down. Wow, very nice by Jack. Takes care of Doom. Notches a, a statue boss under his belt and uh, an impressive kill. Earns a Magicite, earns Maduin for his troubles. And ooh, it's a good one. Warp, Ice 3, Life 3, and Break. That that is very juicy, particularly with this uh, with Terra start. Obviously, Terra has 
Uh, the second highest raw magic attack in the game uh, also has natural magic, so she's probably going to be dedicated spellcaster for a large chunk of this run, and obviously any tier 3 damage spell is greatly appreciated. So uh, that is a, a nice reward for Jack. Sid, meanwhile, finding the perhaps less exciting reward of Umaro at the back of the sealed cave. Jolly on his way to go get his Yeti. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's it's a very smart play, um, particularly early on, starting with Terra. You know, the Sealed Cave is just such a treasure-rich check, probably the, the highest density of treasure in the game. So, um, it's, it's a very juicy early check. I didn't notice before, but there are in fact fixed dice in the sealed cave as well. Hmm. Alright, next question. When, when are we going to find the Setzer? When are we going to find Setzer? When are we going to find a fourth character? And uh, in all likelihood, a, a fifth or sixth character as well. It's unlikely that uh, our runners are going to keep Umaro in their final party. Though I would certainly love to see them try. That'd be fun. And as we see on Jolly Green Race screen, there was in fact a dragon horn in the sealed cave. So sealed cave, kind of a stacked cave. And uh, giving our runners a, a sort of strong start to uh, this spicy seed. Jolly has just claimed his Yeti. Yes, indeed. So now all runners are up to three characters. We see Green Monkey taking on some random encounters, runs into a Mad Oscar, hopefully doesn't get sour breathed into oblivion. Uh, Shadow Sid looking through ruined South Figaro, sort of double dipping on uh, treasure rich town checks. And I think. Yeah, Jack is working his way up the Narsh Cliffs to take care of that Mog check. Yeah, and it's not that far of a walk. Not too bad. I know a lot of runners like to uh, sort of bundle the Narsh checks together for efficiency. Uh, but... Uh... We see a merchant at Kepka at Narsh, so that will not be a character at the Kepka at Narsh battle, and it will not be a character at Lone Wolf Check either. You'll never get this golden helmet. Vanilla and golden hairpin. That would be funny to see. Uh. Jack, obviously hoping this is an Esper, it is the Magicite Carbuncle. So uh, Jack, with an early Esper Edge, has found two already. We'll see if he takes on the Kefket Narsh battle. He's thinking about it. Yep, he saved. All right, here we go. Well, the benefit of Umaro is you throw him in the second party, so... You have two characters that you care about, uh, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Meanwhile, Shadow Sid checking, looks like Ruined Sen, the uh, thief merchant, has it's around 48k for that Esper, or possible Esper. So, uh, I'm not going to purchase that right away. But Jack, working through the soldiers. See if he does the uh, oh so slick soldier skip. Nope, playing it safe. Gonna wait for wave two to pass. And it is Vargas! Vargas and the Pooh Bears! Yeah. I would say this is a, a fairly manageable boss fight. What do you think, Mega Man? Yeah, 
fairly manageable. You easy in vanilla. It's slightly harder in randomizer, but it's true. Sid, meanwhile, finding aura lances for sale, grabs one of those. So yeah, if this is a a very dragoon friendly seed. Love to see it. I guess, would that count as one of the uh, boosted random tier chops? I don't know. Chat, you decide. <laughs> All answers can be found in chat. Meanwhile, uh, Jack, working through Vargas, takes him down. We'll earn an item or Esper for his reward. Jolly Green Ray checking World of Balance Zen does tell us that uh, the thief is selling an Esper. As Jack finds Zone Seek from Kefka and Narsh. Oh, and I Sid. know Pearl and Boat 2. Sid's gonna hop on a river ride. River ride. Not the fastest check, but hey, it's something. That's not something you like to see there. Not what you want to see, but can give a, a fat chunk of experience um, if you can work through it. Uh, Shadow Sid does not have Mog set up for jumping. Uh, it's going to roll with Dance Mog, but uh, if Sid can work through this, these, these random counters will boost his levels early game. And, uh, you know, it's also possible he's uh, playing the racer, not the seed, thinking that Leet River might be an uncommon check. Though I think Jack's about to do the same thing. As we see Sid working through some fairly manageable random encounters, Green Monkey working through the Kafka at Narsh battle will find Vargas and Zone Seek at the end of that. Jolly Green Ray still working through some towns, checking shops, checking treasures, looking for those few, you know, top tier items that can uh, push him over the edge. See, Green Monkey broke their Ogre Nyx. Uh, that is, of course, a, uh, a a danger of using that weapon. But, uh, obviously, Dragoon Mog cares not. Falling from the sky with big numbers should be able to take care of that fight. Terra with the quick proc of Insta-Dev is on Shadow Sid's side. Very cool. Uh, and yeah, we have two two runners riding down the river. Uh, it'll be exciting to see what is at the end of this. Now Jack has uh, completed more checks than Sid has, so we'll be earning more experience per battle from this. And uh, the, these Hades Gigas, or however you say that, um, are, are, are very experience rich. And then of course there are the, you know, Nintendo Power Strats of just hold left and fight random encounters forever until you hit level 99. Yes. And speaking of Nintendo Power, 
when I was at the store one day, I, I found the little box of mints that it was in the shape of an NES controller and it had Nintendo Power Mints on it. I thought that was cool. I dig that. <laughs> Schwanz, I see you. Um, but we are uh, approaching the end of this Whitewater River ride as uh, Green Monkey taking on Vargas, but again with uh, Pearl Lance Dragoon Mog should have no trouble, obviously, taking care of that Pooh Bear, the minimum of fuss. Jolly Green Ray, looks like, is uh, breaking from the pack. Oh, wow. There were Hades, and now there's a Gigantos. So the two brawny, bulky ogre men on the same river. That ain't fun. <laughs> that ain't fun, but the, the experience is well worth it. As uh, Jolly Green Ray working through Zozo, uh, breaking away from the pack, and uh, see what he finds there as Sid finds Kefka. At the end of the river, this is a very manageable boss fight. Especially now that his characters have learned some tier 2 damage spells. And what is at the end of... Oh! After all that, it is a dead check. Earns a red cap for his troubles. Uh, not what you want to see after a very not lengthy worse. check. Not worse. Well, hopefully he'll he'll put the uh, the levels to good use. But um, yeah, that's that's an oof. We'll have to see what uh, Jolly Green finds up in Zozo. As we know, Green Monkey will find Carbuncle from Lone Wolf, unless he picks the Gold Helmet. Surprisingly, does not pick the Gold Helmet. Picks the Esper instead. Good choice. Yes, good choice indeed. I just noticed Jack not even running Umaro in the party. Just uh, using the, the two starting characters. A little bit of a risky play, if you ask me. As we see, some of our runners, uh, Covering other runners' ground. Be interesting to see where they go next. It seems Jolly Green Ray has has picked Zozo for his leveling spot. Is taking on these random encounters as he works his way up the uh, rain slicked urban jungle gym of Zozo. As Green Monkey is about to take on Doom. We'll see how he fares against this end game statue boss. Oh no! Nope. <laughs> immediately resets. <laughs> You don't want none of it. Fair enough. The Schwantz, not a fan of Zozo. I... Uh, I'm a big fan of Zozo. I think it's pretty cool. I think the music is sweet. I think uh, having this sort of decayed urban environment was uh, very unique for JRPGs back back at the time. I think jumping around buildings is fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, random encounters are always annoying. But uh, Jolly Green Ray about to find who's here at the top of Zozo. 
doing a little bit of menuing first. Yes, indeed, as Jack is hopping from tower to tower, and Sid is taking on Vargas, and Jolly Green Ray finds the Magic Master. Oh no! Oh no! Yikes, yeah, that that is a quick restart. That is a huge dead end. Uh, I, I don't think Jolly Green Ray or, or any of these runners have the, the you know, tools they need to take on Magimaster. Master. I think that is uh, <laughs> effectively a dead check. That's rough. Jack finding the bad news. We'll see what he does. He seems to be going for it. Well, he can toss a shield and hope that does enough, but now the wall change is active and it's impossible to know if another elemental shield will work. I guess maybe one of the dances could have had... Um, What's the move? Landslide is an excellent dance ability. Maybe he can hope to landslide Magimaster to death, but I don't even know if he even has that, and I don't know if he can survive long enough, and in fact, he also takes the L on that one and resets out of Zozo. So that is a very rude find here in the first half hour of this seed. But on the flip side, Jolly Green Ray finding a very welcome find, which is an Atma weapon in the clock of uh, Balance Collingen, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's not a treasure everybody checks, so that could be an advantage for him. Atma weapon, obviously a, a fantastic sword, uh, much stronger in Worlds Collide than it is in the base game. Yeah, but that is a pretty late game weapon. That is true. It will not help him out in the moment, but is something to hopefully build towards in the future as Sid is taking on Doom. We see uh, Umaro tossing Moogles at the problem. Gonna bust out a fire rod on this and uh, should be able to manage this fight. Green Monkey also making the choice of riding down the Leet River will find a red hat for his troubles. Uh, Jolly Green Ray finding a vanilla monster in a box, Lobo, in the uh, tutorial house. And I think it's Jack uh, making an Umaro check? He's making a dragon check first. Interesting. Again, these are unscaled dragons. Uh, and I, I don't think this is going to work out well for Jack. I, I guess maybe some Pearl Lance procs could certainly help him out. Maybe we're going to witness the true power of a dragoon build. Doing 1,200... It a hit. And I would consider that pretty good. I, it, it's decent damage for sure, but these these unscaled dragons, I I'm pretty sure they all have over twenty thousand HP, except for the white dragon. So this is a a not a gimme fight, but again, maybe we're about to witness. Uh, the power of the jump command. Again, if you're not on screen, you can't be hit. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sid picking up uh, Maduin will be very happy to see the Ice 3, Life 3 combo. Uh, Sid still using Mog as a dancer, not a jumper. So, uh, interesting divergence there. Jack gets hit by a disaster from Skull Dragon and is now a confused imp. So, so much for that dragon fight.
Dr. DT in chat helpfully pointing out that uh, the condemn counter still ticks, even if you're not on screen. So, Jackamus Wedge cutting his losses, skipping the dragon this time, will take on the Tritalk fight, and it is another dragon! Oh my goddess! I said dragon, I meant statue. This is a very nasty statue boss. Mega Man, what do you think about this goddess fight? It's hard. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, he does have at least one Thunder Shield on Terra, as we see, so, uh... Won't be knocked out by Goddess's Bolt magic. And yeah, really, hats off to, to Brianna for this, uh... Very spicy seed. We've had two statue bosses. Magimaster at the top of Zozo, which Sid is about to find out to uh, his chagrin. Um, this is not a gimme seed at all. Yeah. We've had to work for everything in this seed. Except for the two characters at the beginning, because... <laughs> uh, but Goddess is down! Jack takes down his second statue boss of the seed. Sid is gonna try with Magic Master. We'll see what happens. We'll also get to see what Green Monkey does in a little bit with this... this... Ve very rude Magic Master. Jack picking up the Raiden, Esper for his troubles, and chooses not to hop into Umaro's cave. Looks like he's just gonna... Maybe he's just oh, going he's gonna save first. Safe Very smart. Save. Very wise. Always a good idea to save to save. I've had... I did have... Ah, I've had had a few runs die because of a safety save. They didn't take a safety save. Well, you know, safety first, especially in a, in a race like this. Um, worth pointing out, the, the espers we've found so far have been, you know, I would say decent or, or above average. Zone Seek has magic power plus one. Obviously, slap that on, on Terra, and uh, she will serve you well for the rest of the game. Um, Raiden had uh, X-Zone and Cure 3, both very useful spells. Also mute, I think. So we're we're ticking the boxes of uh, spells you want to have. As Sid is is not giving up, doing uh, a fat zero damage. Maybe just <laughs> hoping for Umaro to to carry him. Yeti versus Magic Master. We shall see. Apparently not taking damage from Thunder. Obviously picked up a few Thunder shields. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, Jack is running into Flame Eater. And, uh, bad news for Flame Eater, I think Jack has Ice 3, and it's super effective. So, uh, not gonna see this boss for very long. Only 3,500 damage. I was expecting to see more. Well, you know, it's it's worth pointing out we are still in in early game. Uh, I mean, no no none of our runners have a full party yet. Um, Jack has five espers, but is still uh, not very high level. Um, Green Monkey is is not in a fun spot right now. Has Terra frozen by Doom. Obviously has that, that jumper Mog to do some damage, and, you know, Umaro doing Umaro things. Sid is, is still holding out uh, against the Magical Master. Um, and I guess, yeah, it's really the, the, the Umaro show on, on Sid's screen.
Yeah, he's not really Obviously. doing much except occasionally using in health with Terra. Yeah, he's got Terra healing. Uh, Mog has Sunbath in in his dance, uh, but uh, none of the other dance moves have looked very effective. Uh, so yeah, this is this is just Yidi versus Magimaster. <laughs> and, and he goes down. Put your money on the Yidi. That is very, very impressive by Shadow Sid taking on a, an extremely difficult boss and uh, coming out of it in style. So we'll get to see what this reward is. Meanwhile, uh, Jolly Green Ray taking on Vargas, a Kefka at Narsh. Sid finds an Esper, so not a character. It is uh, Ifrit, and it's kind of garbage. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, at least he gets the, you know, the People's Champion prize for, for taking out Magic Master. That was very impressive. Yes. Well-deserved victory. Meanwhile, uh, Jack working through the ruined Mobliz fight. Uh, has Terra blown away? We'll have Mog for whatever boss is next and finds Gao. So we'll have uh, two characters against, hey, it's everyone's favorite octopus, Ultros. Yeah, I remember as a kid playing this game, and that that I actually liked Mr. Ultros. Oh, who doesn't like Ultros? He's our he's our eight legged purple friend. Um, by the way, Gao has throw, so that is a pretty nice find. Uh, Sid about to make this find, also in uh, ruined Mobles. Uh, but this is um, is this Ultros four or Ultros two? Hits kind of hard. That tentacle took out Gal. I think this but, is uh, Ultras 1. Well, it must have been 2. Uh, Ultras 1 has a, a different sprite. But uh, regardless, Jack is through, finds Throw Gal, which is a welcome addition to the party. And of course, opens up two of Gal's checks. So uh, Jack is. is well on his way. Uh, meanwhile, I think we've... Seems we've temporarily lost Green Monkey. Uh, I blame Magic Master. But uh, we do have three other runners working through this, this extremely spicy seed. Something to note for Shadow Sid is he has three characters, and I believe two of them could be blown away. So he may have to have another Yeti uh, showcase taking on uh, Yeti versus Octopus. Mm. Gonna have to do a little bit of resizing on that. Let's see. You try to recover Green Monkey. Yes, indeed. I'm sure we will get that worked out. Um, I want to give a, a shout out, since we're on the topic, to uh, Brianna Fofana, our, our restreamer, making this community race possible. Uh, really appreciate the effort that goes into that. And of course, the Schwantz, our tremendous tracker, keeping track of the, the madness that we're witnessing. And, uh, and of course, the runners themselves. Uh, so... Um, you know, if you haven't already, give them a follow on Twitch uh, for more exciting Worlds Collides content. And heck, follow all the people here. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Follow everyone. Follow Mega Man. Follow me, but be disappointed because I don't stream. Um, but uh, definitely follow some of these runners. They are They are very talented, putting on a tremendous display this evening of some very high-level Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide goodness. As we see Jolly Green Ray taking on Doom, 
Sid picking up his Gao. Uh, Green Monkey also with Gao. now have the ability with for a full party yes indeed it only took 42 minutes for us to find a fourth character but uh, yeah as we see on, on green monkey screen sketch and throw for Gao sketch is sketch but throw is obviously a fantastic command so uh, very happy to see that a welcome addition to this party as Sid and Jack both working through Gao's Velt check We'll see if we find some random character or chunk of magicite. And in fact, it is Sella's. Yes, feed Mega the Man, it's, it's your it's your girl. May not be other people's girl, but. A. I mean, hey, she, she's strong. She's got, oh, Vanilla Runic. That's fun. But um, as, as I'm sure you and, and chat well know, all, all of the uh, female characters in Final Fantasy VI are very powerful, top-tier characters. Never upset to see any of them. And uh, Shadow Sid, I think, has found his endgame party with Terra... Mog, Sella's Gao, and uh, should be very happy with that. Jack, however, having may... worse luck in the Velt. Sorry, you were saying? It may change because we, you still have two more required characters, but... Uh, that is very true. I mean, there's still many, many requirements left to, uh, to take on Kefka's Tower. Um... So, uh, you know, who knows what uh, our remaining characters could be. It'll be exciting to find out. Meanwhile, Jax Terra has Fire 3 in addition to Ice 3, so uh, that is a, a very powerful character getting some, some unfortunate luck in the Velt. I think Sid, Sid's Celis showed up on the first fight, and now Jack gets it, so... Got to it eventually, and uh, again, we'll probably be pleased to see the uh, former Imperial General in his party. Celis also comes with some very uh, fun checks. The uh, South Figaro Basement is a uh, free check much appreciated. Looks like Sid is heading there. Meanwhile, Jack is uh, heading into another aquatic fixed encounter scene. This time it is uh, the Serpent Trench. As uh, looks like Jolly Green Ray is going to try his luck with the Skull Dragon. Uh, we'll see how this goes. He is uh, certainly little higher level than Jack was when he tried. Um, but again, these, these unscaled dragons are no joke. We'll see how he does. Uh, Terra hitting for four digits with her magic. Obviously, Jumper Gao. Been doing work all seed. So it's, uh, it's possible, but Jumper it is, Mog. again, going to be a difficult fight. It's Jumper Mog. We just got Gao. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke, but yes, Jumper. Dragoon Mog. And Mog is going to be going down. Mog is going to go down. Does still have that Terra to uh, help him back up. I also raised Umaru, probably just to soak some hits. Uh, but a very uh, 
cutthroat fight here, sort of on the razor's edge. Looks like Sid is going to head into uh, the Magic Factory, another one of my favorite areas in the game. Has some banging music, has some uh, juicy checks, and uh, of course has the option for the exciting Indiana Jones Minecart Ride Spectacular. Uh, Jelly Green Ray is in a bit of trouble. See how this goes. Ooh, and now a confused Mog taking out his own party, and that is a reset. That's unfortunate. Uh, Sid, meanwhile, works. entering the Magitech factory as uh, Jack works through the random encounters of the Serpent's Trench, finding some very manageable random encounters, so we'll uh, appreciate the experience they provide and should get through that with a minimum of fuss. Jolly taking on his goddess fight. Yes, indeed. Oh my goddess, part two. Ooh, a love token Umaro is not what you want to see. Uh, but, uh... Well, you don't want to cast Bolt on goddess. But uh, he hopefully has the thunder shields that we've seen all our runners pick up, so should be more or less defended. <laughs> Uh, and, Wait, uh, no. Green Ray learning in real time healed? that she absorbs Pearl and Bolt, so don't do those. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the Magitech factory, we find Sid taking on Rexol, a very frustrating boss, uh, really more annoying than dangerous. But, uh, Mega Man, what are your thoughts on, on Rexol? He is a pain in the ass in vanilla. Oh, in vanilla, he's he's terrifying. Uh, in Worlds Collide, he's uh, much less dangerous. Uh, there's no um, zinger move, so you don't have to kill your party to uh, bring him out. Um, he has uh, extremely high magic defense, so uh, spells don't do a ton. And uh, he has those two little soul savers that uh, really are just there to waste your time. They have, I think, an obnoxiously slow death and rebirth animation. Um, but uh, fortunately, Sid has the tools for the job, should take care of this. Uh, Jolly Green Ray turning to a Maduin summon to do some damage to this goddess. And, uh, oof, that is not... A whole lot of damage. Matter went a little underwhelming. The Yeedy yeets himself. The Yeedy yeets himself at himself and yes, dies. Indeed. Not what you want to see. Jolly Green Ray just has the, the perfect party for Goddess to be a pain. Um... We'll see if he can uh, survive this this very difficult fight. Uh, Sid takes down Rexel. Jolly Green Ray, meanwhile, has been cursed, has uh, under a minute to take care of this statue boss, or will be zombified. Meanwhile, I'm sorry, I looked away for a moment. Was that a, a dead check? At the bottom of Magitech? That's unfortunate. Jolly Green Ray does get it done, however. Takes down Goddess. Happy to see that. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, Jack is going to see if uh, the thief has something worth buying. Uh, it's going to have to do a fair bit of selling. I believe that it was over 29k in World of Balance. 
as uh, Sid takes on the second boss in Magitech Factory, and it's, oh, LOL, Tunnel Armor. Pretty easy, boss. Uh, yes, indeed. Tunnel armor to boss you're always happy to see. Should go down fairly quickly. As uh, Jolly Green Ray is going to go back to Skull Dragon. He, he obviously thinks uh, he can take on this unscaled dragon and is hoping to reap the rewards both in experience and an endgame item. We'll see how he goes. Jolly hasn't had enough yet. <laughs> I mean, if he can get this down, and with a Pearl Lance Dragoon Mog, he certainly has uh, a chance. Uh, the, the rewards would be uh, very juicy. Sid, meanwhile, finding Siren after the Tunnel Armor fight, and looks like he's going on to Magitech 3. Love to see it. He's going to take on a few more random encounters and then uh, fight two bosses. But luckily gets a uh, free health refill between them. As uh, Jolly Green Ray getting a lucky Pearl proc. So, uh, that does a big chunk of damage. I, I think uh, he may have it this time. If he can get, get, a, get a lot of lucky Pearl procs, he should be good. Well, I'm pretty sure that was like 5k. Yeah, I mean, uh, only a few more of those will get the job done as uh, Shadow Sid riding on. Ooh! Riding on the minecart ride, running into some level X magic enemies. I never want to see them. They're all uh, very annoying and they all give no experience, so they are all worth skipping. There's another pro proc from Jolly Green Ray. Another 5k. Really chewing through this dragon now. Umaro doing, you know, his best. But uh, this is really the, the jumper mog show. Yes. It is done. He is dead. Dragon down for Jolly Green Ray. GG. Very impressive. Taking on an unscaled dragon with a, a three-person party. Oh, gets a Pearl Lance for his troubles. Uh, not a dupe you want to see, but um, certainly enjoys the, the experience boost from that battle. Red Baron in chat asking where boots were. There were boots for sale in at least one shop, but uh, the dragon horn was found in Sealed Cave, and uh, both Pearl and Aura Lances were for sale in uh, some of the early towns checked as Shadow Sid runs into the boss at the end of the minecart ride, and it is Frit and Shiva. And again, that Ice 3 coming into play in a big way. One shot, one kill. Love to see it. Oh, and Jolly Green Ray finds Katana Soul. Katana Soul. Why is that exciting, Mega Man? Free offering. Pair that with some fixed dice. Pair that with fixed dice Genji glove, and you have an OP unit. Yes, indeed. And of course, we know Jolly Green Ray does have the Atma weapon already, another excellent offering weapon. So we'll be very happy to uh, take on this fight, which, uh, as Chad points out, is not entirely free. Katana Soul can swing pretty hard. But uh, I think Jolly Green Ray is in an okay position. Sid finds another Esper at the end of Magitek 3 and finds uh, the Dabbing Yeti. Umaro boss.
Wow, Jolly Green Ray finding uh, Katana Soul in a, a Monster in a Box chest that is not always checked. So that may be uh, easily missed by some of our runners. In fact, I know Jack already worked through Umaro's Cave and did not check that box. So that may be a, a crucial advantage for uh, Jolly Green. Meanwhile, speaking of Jolly Green, on Sid's screen, Umaro eats a Jolly Green cherry. Powers up, but uh, is no match for Terra and Fire 3. Yeah, I'm, and I'm pretty sure Fire 3 is has the quickest animation tie in, in Final Fantasy 6. Of all the spells, is that true? I, I, I didn't know. I mean, I, I believe you. Well, I believe it is... It's either first or second. Uh, it is definitely a quick spell, definitely a, a super strong spell, something you always want to find, and obviously something that uh, you definitely want to find on Terra with her incredible magic ability, and of course the Zone Seek Esper offering magic power plus one. As uh, on the right side of our screen, we have a uh, double sized opera encounter. Um, going down really quickly. Yeah, was that, was that a, a vanilla Ultras there? Uh, it was an Ultras, but not Ultras 2. Ah. Well, yes, I believe that was Green Monkey Screen as uh, Jack was working through the Magitech factory, and uh, we can see there is uh, also choosing to take the uh, Magical Minecart ride for uh, the third check. We'll find uh, an Esper at the end of all that. Have had some uh, technical issues with, with Green Monkey Screen, uh, but uh, happy to see uh, they're still going strong, still... Uh, being very competitive in uh, what has been a very fun race so far. Yes. It's a, a very unforgiving one, and not that. Very true. Yeah, this is definitely uh, a, a, a showcase of our runner's skills and a showcase of how uh, Worlds Collide Seeds can go wrong sometimes, as uh, Shadow Sid is getting annihilated by Outsiders. Yikes, the throw command just as strong on enemies as it is on uh, party members. And that is a, a quick reset from Shadow Sid. Tis a double-edged sword. Indeed. Meanwhile, we see Jack taking down the Yeti in the sky. We see Jolly Green Ray about to uh, find his throw Gao. Fortunately, gets Umaro blown away, not Terra. And I'm thinking now, as, as I'm working through it, the uh, the seed is, still has some nasty surprises left in it. I mean, there really aren't that many checks available to our runners uh, outside of the Strago that uh, Sid and Jack are about to find in the Opera House. And, uh, of course, no, no one's happy to see Strago. So that will just be more... Uh, challenge for this uh, very challenging seed. Unless if you are one of those weird kids who like a strago and was bullied at school for it. 
That was not me. I never liked Strago. <laughs> Sounds like a very specific story. Uh, I mean, Strago, the, the character is cool. He's got a sweet mohawk. He's, uh, you know, mage warrior. He knows lore. It's just, uh, you know, all his checks are, are Garbo. But uh, that may be what uh, our runners are forced to uh, pursue. I mean, we've seen, obviously, Mog, Umaro checks. We've seen Gao's checks. Uh, this is the third Celis check. Um, we've seen all of Terra's checks, or almost all. Um, so, yeah, it looks like uh, we're following the old man to... Uh, find our way through this seed. Well, I think maybe at this point, I think I might go burning house. <laughs> Wait, no, Green Monkey's the only one that's found Strago so far. Correct. I, I was uh, assuming that Sid and Jack would get through the Opera House and, and also find Strago. Uh, but uh, as we see, Green Monkey has not completed Magitek Factory, and so we'll be working through that. And uh, I suspect we'll also see a minecart ride on uh, Green Monkey's screen as uh, Jack makes short work of Ultros. Sid, uh, presumably, about to do the same, and uh, we will see where they go from there. And, and Brianna, I have to say, you really... You rolled a gem. This is the sort of race that uh, you hate to run, but love to watch. And it's been a very fun time watching our runners grapple with this uh, this challenging start. Yes. And uh, yeah, looks like Jack is following your lead, Mega Man, heading into Burning House. So you, you called this before Jack did it. Why do you why would you pick this Strago check to do first? Okay, is that's practically your only option at this point. True. I mean there's also there's Ebbets Rock, there's uh Fanatics Tower. Those are long checks. I'm going to do a short check. <laughs> well, sadly, Strago doesn't have short checks. But uh, obviously, Jack is, is following your lead and uh, is going to work his way through these uh, theoretically skippable, but in practice, impossible to skip random encounters. Green Monkey, meanwhile, uh, peeking into Fanatic's Tower, sees it is not a character and ducks back out as uh, Jolly Green Ray, working through Gauss checks, is taking a ride on the Serpent's Trench. Schwanson Chat uh, making the argument for Ebbets Rock. Uh, you may be mechanically correct, in that it is shorter than the Burning House, but it is uh, personally my least favorite check in the game. Just these this RNG teleporters throwing you around in the darkness is, uh, I, I find it so frustrating. Never happy to do this check, but um, it is, I think, technically faster than uh, some of the other options. So uh, we'll see how Green Monkey works his way through that. We'll see if the teleporter uh, RNG is kind to him.
And he does make it through and finds Dullahan at the end of uh, this spooky dark cave. Dullahan, a boss that is not weak to Pearl, even though, doesn't it look like it should be weak to Pearl? Yes, it totally should. And look, there's a skeleton in man and in a in a ghostly ass horse. A skeleton man being pulled in a chariot by a flaming skeleton horse. Is that not the most like undead, weak to holy thing you've ever heard of? But no. Dullahan says, meh. Pearl, I don't care. Meanwhile, Jack finding and you see uh, undead another... things, you either. What's that? Well, if you see something undead in a video game, either you burn it in flame, it ends or or. Or make God's light shine upon it. <laughs> that is good advice for, for any uh, undead enemy in any RPG. Uh, Jack, meanwhile, taking down Inferno, who is at the end of uh, Burning House, how apropos. Uh, Inferno can be a tricky boss, but uh, Jack makes short work of him. And finds a, another magicite for his troubles. The Torato Esper. As we see Sid... Also working through the burning house. And Green Monkey finds Sabin. So if if Strago is at one end of the spectrum in terms of good checks, Sabin is probably at the other end. Uh, has a, a ton of checks. Um, some very convenient ones, very lucrative ones. Um, probably a bit too late to add him to the party but uh, definitely a, a welcome addition to Green Monkey's team. Jack Pekin Fanatic thinks realizing it's only an Esper, so it went as expected, going to ooh, hideout. Yeah, heading into Ebbets Rock, and at uh, one hour, ten minutes, uh, Jackmus Wedge is is approaching endgame. Uh, we know that uh, Sabin is at the end of this check. This will be Jack's seventh character. Has the ten espers required. Uh, so we, we could see uh, our first runner entering KT in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, Green Monkey pursuing some of Sabin's checks. Looks like a, uh, not a character at uh, the Imperial camp. Obviously hoping for an Esper at this point. Yeah, and he still needs a lot of them. <laughs> he does. There, there were some... Um, Technical issues with, with Green Monkey's screen. I'm not entirely sure that uh, our, our tracker is up to date. We may have missed a few things. Um, definitely has the uh, seven required characters and uh, almost certainly has more than three espers at this point. But uh, we will have to see... That's Jolly Green Ray working through these... Uh, I guess basically required Opera House with a very rude fight. These Outsiders and Madam. Oh, God. Crunch. Oh, oh, Gao survived. Come on, Gao. Well, oh, she cured uh, well the what random a, Opera a... House encounters are brutal, but once you get to the boss, it's basically free. Yes, indeed. Uh, Green Monkey, meanwhile, hopped off the edge of a waterfall, finds number 128 floating down in it, and uh, should be able to take care of this boss as Sid is taking on number 128's big brother, Inferno, at the end of Burning House. 
Uh, Inferno, a boss that I often have trouble with. I, I find him to be a, a deceptively tricky boss fight. But I think uh, at this stage of the game, Sid should be able to uh, clear him out no trouble. Still has not uh, turned Mog into a Dragoon. Uh, which is just a, an interesting uh, point of divergence in this seed. Meanwhile, Jack picks up Saban, has seven characters, has ten espers, and at one hour, twelve minutes and change is entering Kefka's Tower. Yes, and a banging soundtrack as well. Oh, yeah. Music in this game is, is top tier. Everybody knows that. Yeah, and I feel like game devs these days have gotten super lazy. Because back in the 16 bit era, they were like, how much uh, can we squeeze out of this console? And like modern game devs, what can we get away with calling a game. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, we see uh, Green Monkey picking up Cyan at the bottom of the waterfall. So, uh, opens up more options for, for Green Monkey as uh, Sid working through uh, Ebbets Rock and Jack working through Kefka's Tower. It is... Uh, as we all know, a, a long hike through Kefka's Tower. But uh, obviously Jack has a, a pretty substantial lead over our runners on this restream. And uh, we'll get to see how the end game plays out here. It seems like the right set, but both. Uh, Greens and Jack and Mrs. Streams have both froze, which is sad. Hope they will be back up and running soon. Jolly fighting. In, oh, speak it and it will be done. Streams are back. Jack, uh, again, continuing this trek through uh, Kefka's Tower. Jolly Green Ray learning that Rexol also absorbs Pearl. There really are a, a surprising number of enemies in Final Fantasy VI that absorb Holy Elemental. Much more than you would think. Or at least much more than I would think. Green Monkey choosing to skip the dragon fight that we know to be Skull Dragon. Um, obviously trying to move a little more quickly at this phase of the game as Jack takes on the first of the Kefka Tower bosses. And it's another Ultros! Alright! Uh, Ultros uh, 4 it must be. And as uh, we also see, Jack did pick up uh, an offering uh, over the course of his run, and we can see the offering at the weapon combo doing work. Uh, really, since since the uh, the change in uh, one of the more recent patches, at the weapon has has become a total S tier item in my mind. I think it is is fantastically powerful and. Uh, I think Jack's going to give us a showcase of offering Atma tech through uh, this climb of Kefka's Tower. And Jolly defeating Rexel. Happy to see that. An annoying boss down. And uh, Sid taking down Dulahan. 
Green Monkey working through the always frustrating goddess fight, and uh, Jack choosing to take on a blue dragon, presumably to level up his uh, Atma weapon Terra. Sword. Wow, the big brain plays using Drain Sword to uh, get the HP up to switch back to Atma to do more Atma damage. That that is fun. That is fun to see. HP is mine now. Shadow so, uh, doing collapsing house. Yes, yeah, Sid uh, has the same seven characters Jack has, but uh, still needs some espers, and is going to work through some of the uh, quicker Sabin checks to uh, search for those. Jack now going back to <laughs> Drainer Tech. Sid, meanwhile, cracking open a monster in a box, finding the Pugs, which is uh, obviously not the one you want to see, but uh, can reap some rewards. They do have a chance to drop Minervas, and uh, have a chance to steal Minervas from them. So, uh, sure, Shadow, Shadow Sid keeping his fingers crossed in that one, as Jack is through with that Solo Terra Blue Dragon... <laughs> Drainer offering Bonanza, and uh, hilariously receives another Genji armor as a reward. I believe that is the third one of the seed. Jolly Green Ray about to show off our fourth minecart ride of the seed really tells you everything about uh, this community race right there that that all of our runners have felt forced to take the minecart ride uh, hoping to get an edge on this seed as uh, Jack working through the three locks at this point, and uh, we'll get to see what the final boss gauntlet has in store. Though, to be honest, I don't know what what is left. This this seed has thrown everything it has at our runners so far. Perhaps a doom gaze is all I can think of. As we see uh, Jack taking on Air Force. Schwantz in chat mentioning Air Force is my least favorite boss in the game, which I think is uh, as good a time as any to, to ask chat, who's your least favorite boss in the game? There's certainly plenty to choose from. Yeah, and there are a lot of bosses to choose from. Magic Master definitely has to be uh, near the top of the list. 
Jack uh, making short work of Air Force. Uh, was doing the, the drainer offering shenanigans for a little while, then remembered that Terra has super high magic power and bolt magic. Took care of that. Jack checking the uh, validation chest. Love to see that. Really respect uh, validating your run. Ooh, the Three Stooges. These can be tricky, especially with Jack's party of one. Can, can Atma offering Terra out damage the Stooges? This is going to be a very interesting fight for Jack and Nick. Yeah. Hilariously, he kills the two, but not Curly, who can revive them. But, Atma weapon offering combo, showing off why it is such a powerful combo. And uh, Terra takes down three Stooges. Meanwhile, Green Monkey working through the auction house, hoping to pick up last few uh, espers. And uh, Sid choosing to take on a dragon. Wants uh, to beef up the levels a little bit, perhaps hoping for a, a nice uh, top tier item. And finds the Dirt Durgan, which is the dragon you really never want to see. I would this say if we were listing least favorite dragons, dragon this is my game. favorite. What's that? Sorry, you were saying? Dirt Dragon is probably the hardest. I think so. I think uh, Quake is such an incredibly powerful spell, and, and Earth damage is so rare, there are very few ways to mitigate it. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can eat an unlucky quake and uh, get wiped very quickly. But uh, at this point in the race, Shadow Sid has a very powerful party and uh, should be able to take care of it. And yeah, Jack just uh, chilling before the end. Green Monkey, meanwhile, getting uh, pretty decent luck in the auction house finds uh, the Golem Esper, which uh, you're always happy to see, as Sid downs the Dirt Durgan. Picking up Marvel Shoes for his troubles. Marvel Shoes, um... I like to call Marvel Shoes the best relic that I never use. Because, uh, Marvel Shoes are a fantastic relic. Give you a ton of very useful buffs and bonuses. But, uh... Sort of S-minus tier, if you will. Yeah, they are a pretty good relic. But of course, that's just my personal opinion. As uh, Jack takes on a statue boss and its old daddy llama. Uh, a boss that, um, as a commentator, you love to see early on because uh, Dedaluma has a pretty interesting and complex boss script. It's just uh, you rarely get to talk about it because he goes down pretty quickly, which is uh, what I suspect we're going to see here. Yep. Yep, and there he goes. Jolly getting his Frego. 
Yes, indeed. Finding his Strago, his required Strago at that. Um, <clears throat> so that that is how this uh, seed had to be unraveled with the, the Opera House play. As uh, Sid does a bit of shopping, Jack finds Chatternook. Another one of those bosses that uh, I would say is more annoying than dangerous. Yeah. Chatternook is probably the most annoying boss. And of course, one of the best changes in Worlds Collide is uh, making the uh, counter quicker, so it's uh, Chatternook is in demon form more often and lady form less often. But we see uh, Dragoon Mog still showing up, dropping quad nines on Chatternook. Yes, love to see those high deeps. Ooh, taking a nasty white deep on green side. Yikes. Hate to see that. Chatternook, definitely a, a contender for uh, least favorite boss. Uh, Sid now taking on the Skull Dragon. Uh, and I notice our, our runners have pretty low level characters. Uh, I, th I think I just saw on Jack's screen, Celis is level 33. So, sort of scraping the, the bottom of what I would consider, you know, uh, stable, reliable, effective KT levels. So, uh, presumably that's why Sid and others have been pursuing dragons, does find just that duplicate Pearl Lance. And now Green Monkey running into Skull Dragon. And Jackamus going into Kefka proper at 130. Yes, indeed. With, with a, a substantial lead, a very well run seed from Jackamus Wedge. My memory is correct. He does certainly has life three. I believe uh, he has mute, and uh, obviously has X zone and doom. So has all all of the magical tools you would want when uh, heading into the final battle. It's uh, just a question of can he execute, and can this uh, Atma weapon offering Terra throw Gao, Dragoon Mog, and helpful Celis. Uh, get him through. That is it. You're joining Jackanus and Kefka Tower. Yes, indeed. Our second runner to enter KT. We will see how he fares through this final section of Final Fantasy VI. And it looks like Green Monkey is right behind him.
always interesting for me to see how uh, runners split up their, their party for the final push through Kafka's Tower. I think uh, I and I, I know others like to put their best party in the third slot, or what usually happens is your good two characters, and then hope party one and party two can solo their section. Oh, and Shadow Sid finding another offering. Just sitting out there. That's generous. Jack and Mason to phase two. Getting oh so closer to the end. Yes, indeed. Has an imped Mog at the moment. But, uh, yeah, fixes that. Shawan's asking if we ever found a fixed dice user. Um... Maybe Cyan, but uh, I don't think anyone else was able to. So kind of a tease when you find fixed dice in the first ten minutes of a seed and then are never able to use it. Which is a big bummer. Definitely a bummer, but makes things more exciting for us viewers. Gao goes down on Jack's screen. Uh, again, with these these fairly low-level characters, um, has to be very careful working through the tiers of the final battle. <laughs> Getting up just to go back down. <laughs> so rude. Hate it when that happens. What? Ooh, and Doom Tusk. I hate to see Doom Tusk. Uh, th this this battle is in danger of of going off the rails for Jack. Needs to uh, revivify that that Terra. Needs to uh, get his party back in fighting shape, and instead has to restart. So wow, mm. tier two final battle takes another victim. It is such a dangerous section of the final battle. So many moving parts. So many ways things can go wrong. And uh, yeah, Jack with a quick reset, and apparently no revivifies in the inventory. You do not want to die you're fighting Kefka. That, is, that sets you way far back. <laughs> Very, very true. Yeah, big, big time loss right at the end. Um, fortunately, uh, Jack had some time to give uh, with uh, that just that incredible head start into Kefka's Tower. But yeah, might be, might be sweating a little bit, having to uh, take on the final battle again. Sid now working through the, the three locks, or three switches, three buttons, the two weights, whatever you want to call this area, and uh, we'll be working towards the final battle shortly. Green Monkey right on his heels, and uh, Jolly Green Ray working through uh, the burning house.
Schwaz in chat pointing out that Shadow Sid did defeat Magimaster at, like, level 6. So, uh, gets a gold star for that. A, a very impressive fight. Uh, sadly, uh, did not help him. I think it was a dead check. Um, or maybe just a not very useful Esper. But, uh, sorry? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a not very useful Esper. Right. Jack, meanwhile, well, back to tier two. We'll have to see how this goes the second time around. Jolly Green Ray fighting the uh, deceptively tricky Inferno. And uh, Sid's solo Terra taking on Air Force. And in fact, we have dual Air Forces on our screen. Umaro has one HP in a dream. Aww. And down he goes. Jack breaking out the Siren Esper. Excellent way to mute the magic enemy in Tier 2. Can't use magic if you can't speak. Exactly. Sid also checking the validation chest. Love to see that. Second gold star for Sid. Uh, Green Monkey having a little more trouble with Air Force than Sid did. Uh, but this uh, Dragoon Mount Mog should get it done. We'll see how Sid's Terra fares against the Stooges. Ice 3 is an excellent way to start. Doing quad 9s on Curly. Jack looking to be in much better control of this tier two battle this time around. Obviously he has uh, Gao up, really wants to take out uh, Tiger, the one who casts Doom Tusk, um, because that can just really throw off your whole fight. Yes. It can be a real pain if that happens. Well, Mega Man, I'm curious to hear uh, your thoughts as well as uh, anyone in chat. Wh what order do you take out the enemies in Tier 2? Obviously, you'd like to start with uh, Instant Death on Tools and a mute on magic, but uh, after that, what's your strategy? Well, if I have a melee group, I go for the bottom one, the blue section, the red section, and then, of course, is the man in the back. Makes sense. Just want to call out uh, Green Monkey had a very swag X zone kill on the final stooge. Love to see that. And uh, yes, Jack is through dragon. the dangerous tier two and is on to the also dangerous tier three. Yes, calmness can end many runs. Yes, indeed. Oof! It's a scary Merton. My Fortunately, looking too high. Yeah. 
Uh, Jack's uh, ladies immune to fire. Pretty happy to see that. But uh, yeah, Mog is at five hit points. Gal went down. This could be a, a very spicy tier three battle. menu buff to make sure Terra has full HP when she swings the Atma weapon. Yes, because the more HP you have, the more damage at the weapon you do. Yes. The, the closer you are to 100% of your health, the more damage it will do. Jack breaks out the life threes to survive calmness. Uh, Green Monkey, probably the only one to find Golem this seed with his uh, deep dive into the auction house. We'll be very happy to have that. But uh, life three will certainly do in a pinch. Not looking too hot. No, Jack Scout in a rough spot. Down he goes. Life three pops him back up. Pearl proc. And there's the calmness. Single attack, blocked by Mog. You know, I don't always block a Calmness attack, but when I do, it's when I already had Calmness protection. Anyway, Jack is through, ascends to the clouds to take on the Mad Clown. Kefka himself. There's that fallen one. And uh, an immediate elixir on Terra to get that uh, Atma weapon damage where you want it to be. And uh, again, this is a showcase for the Atma weapon offering combo. Love to have it. Now, taking off the elemental fields to toss them for a little more damage, get this fight through. Love those elemental shields. So useful throughout the entire game. And then at the very end, you can uh, just throw them at the boss for 9,000 damage. Yo, the legendary four jump. The four jumper to end it. That's GG. Yo, the dragoon kill. That was over 10,000 damage from Dragoon Mog. That's the power of jump. But GG, Jackamus, for a very well run race. A, a very 
dangerous uh, seed. I, it, I think it uh, asked a lot of the runners and um, was certainly very enjoyable for us viewers. Jack was the uh, second finish overall after uh, doesn't, but uh, obviously had a very good showing in this race as Sid and Green Monkey are about to enter the final battle themselves. It'll be an interesting to see a head-to-head uh, -head final battle, see how these uh, runners and their parties may uh, differ. Yes, it will certainly be interesting. And in the meantime, let's see if we, we can get but yeah, I think we'll get uh, Jack in here to talk in a minute or so, but for now we can just uh, enjoy these uh, these dueling final battles. Again, seeing the, the difference in how these runners ran this race. Green Monkey with the Dragoon Mog, uh, and Sid has been using this uh, sort of dance and magic power mod the whole race. And yet here they are, tied, or near enough, going into uh, the end of the game. Sid uh, ascends to tier two, which as we saw in Jack's fight can be a, a very dangerous tier. Yes. Yes, Green also joining in. Yeah, just a few seconds behind. And uh, Jolly Green Ray taking on the Stooges, so very close to the final battle as well. Interestingly, all of our runners fought the Stooges with Terra in the party. Not a lot of uh, divergence in terms of splitting up the party. As Sid gets uh, an X-Zone kill on Tools. Green Monkey trying to follow suit, and does. Jolly is finishing up the Stooge fight. And as we're watching these these runners race to the finish, I want to point out that uh, Boo has finished in third place in the overall community race. But it is still a very, very close fight for uh, on-stream second between Shadow Sid and Green Monkey here.
Cure 3 coming in handy yet again. I will say for all of the, the hurdles that this seed threw at you, I think the one saving grace were the early espers. They were all very useful, uh, had some very strong magic to start, but uh, what do I know? I didn't run this race. You know who did? It's Jack. Jack GG. Hey, how you doing? I'm the winner. Hey. It was good. Uh, yeah, yeah a, a very impressive uh, silver medal finish. How do you feel about this one? Uh, gold medal finish. No one else on stream finished faster than I did. And the one guy who did finish faster than I did didn't take a five minute pee break and probably is not as rusty as I am. So, yeah, gold medal finish. Yeah, how, how, how doing do you tonight? feel having, uh, having two dozen or so people wait for you to come back from the bathroom? We were very on the edge of our seats. I'm glad you were. I'm glad that I made it interesting. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the on the seed? Um, it was easy. Is basically the easiest explanation I can give. There were a couple of like, oh, well, I just lost a few minutes because there's a magic master at the top of Zozo, but it wasn't necessary, so whatever. And oh. I somehow didn't find a single revivify from either a monster drop or a shop, and my best character got zombied and had to restart the final battle. Other than that, it was pretty easy. I mean, you started with, uh, you know, the best character, Mog, who's not usually an optimal starting character, but you found a Dragoon Horn in the first two minutes. Then I went to Albrook and I could buy a Pearl Lance and a Dragoon boot, so jump ring Dragoon goes burr. It, it was something yeah. of a, a jumper's paradise, this seed. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, jump carried me through the early game, but then once my other characters kind of came of age, it was just like, you know, I mean, I've got all these level 3 spells. I've got an Atma weapon, I've got an 11th hour offering, which validated my choice to send Terra up the third path and gain a whole bunch of levels. I mean, her damage per swing went from 1400 to 3200 from three boss fights. And it's just like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll take that, let's go. Yeah, it was a, a fairly low level finish for, for you and... Um... The runners we, we've been able to see here. I, I think you entered the fight around level 33? Um, all my characters were low 30s. Um, Terra was mid 40s because I sent her up the path with all the bosses. And uh, since I found that Atma weapon early on, I'm just thinking that uh, I am going to want to send one of the girls up that path there. And Terra had the higher level, better spells, better etc, etc. She's the best character, yada yada. So, you know, what you gonna do? Just roll with it. The, the, the offering was just icing on the cake. It's like, oh, I can, you know, go from 4,000 around to like 12,000 around. I'll take that, sure. I had my level 3s, I had my death spells, I had Siren. But the only thing I didn't have was Revivifies and like Fenrir, but the first Esper I found had Life 3, which I did use... Maybe if it was a race with stakes on the line, I would have gambled on not using Life 3, but, I mean, these are just fun races. I mean, I, I took a pee break for five minutes, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not to say that I didn't take the race seriously, because I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that. I mean, I, I, I played to the best of my ability for having not played in a few months, and, um... My menus and my Esper management were much, much slower than normal. I don't know if that was noticeable or not on the restream, but I feel like I lost a couple minutes there. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just nitpicking. Maybe I'm a perfectionist. I don't know. I had a lot of fun with this. It's really great to be back. And I, I did the thing the best. <laughs> well, it was certainly very fun to watch. Uh, definitely... Uh... Enjoyed uh, the community race, and uh, you know, if you subtract bathroom bake of 1:41-ish, is a, a very respectable time. 
no matter how you slice it. Uh, Mega Man, do you have any questions for Jack? Uh, oh wow, I'm being interviewed oh. by Mega Man? Dude, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours. Your video games are the greatest things ever. Please, please ask me ask me questions. Let's let's <laughs> keep this thing going. Thank you. Ooh, but I don't really have any questions, but and other and then I comment on and your your drain in sort your at the weapon combo. That was sweet as heck. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Y yeah. Yeah, um... Oh, I actually did learn something from the race. Um... Ogre Nixes can break whenever you're jumping. I was not aware that that was a thing that could happen, because I know there's certain commands that allow the Ogre Nix not to break. Luckily, that was on the killing shot for that particular boss, and it didn't matter. Well, there you go. You learn something every race. If, if you, uh, you know, you learn something new, then you're a winner. Well, I mean, I'm a winner without learning things, but, you know, sometimes you're just allowed to have everything, right? <laughs> uh, well, uh, Shadow Sid's about to take on Final Kafka. Do you have any final thoughts on this community race? Well, uh, I'm gonna bring up the old Glorious Restream, because I like watching these, and, I mean... I probably should have watched more of them while I was unwell. So, I'll watch the finish. It'll be good times. And hey, we got a brand new hockey season. Folks, I don't care what your favorite team is. Let's go Bruins! Also, yes, Drew is a cheater. <laughs> Jack Wedge bringing you the Final Fantasy VI randomizer and NHL crossover you didn't know you needed. Meanwhile, Shadow Sid is taking on Final Kafka, has pulled ahead of Green Monkey right at the end of this gauntlet of a final battle. And uh, Shadow Sid gonna have to deal with some train issues. Yes, and the best hockey game ever to create it was 3D Hockey 98 on the N64. I will, I will take your word for it. Meanwhile, the end comes beyond chaos on Shadow Sid's screen. Desperately launching his attacks. And uh, he's about to get Goner. Goner, definitely the coolest looking spell in the game. Uh, though, of course, not the highest damaging spell. It would probably do more damage than it does, considering what is about to happen. Though I'm sure Sid wouldn't say that, because he's uh, going to try to survive it. which he does with the three characters that matter. Green Monkey, meanwhile, is in a bit of trouble, has three characters down. Ooh, and he's in the, the Medio cycle. This is not looking Does he know? Good yes, he does, using the Revivify tech. Love to see this. Healing tier three enough to get it out of the Medio cycle to hopefully heal his party. But uh, this W wind fortunately misses. But Green Monkey is, is hanging on for dear life in this tier three fight. Meanwhile, Shadow Sid continuing to do work is uh, back in the goner charge up phase. Uh, and this is, I think, where we see uh, the difference between a, a Dragoon Mog and a everything else Mog. Um, Mog is, is swinging for a few thousand damage, is casting spells for a few thousand damage, but is not doing those big, big jump numbers that we've seen on other runner screens.
Yeah. Green Monkey making a good recovery. Yeah, it looks like uh, he's got all his party members back on their feet. Uh, did the did the smart thing of uh, curing the boss to make the fight easier. Sort of uh, counterintuitive, but uh, is obviously extremely effective when you catch yourself in, in that uh, sort of medio rinse cycle. As uh, another goner comes out on Shadow Sid's screen. To not much effect, to be honest. And he has Dancing Maud. That's that's a swag of, of its own right, using dance in the final battle. And of course, who doesn't like Sunbath? Monkey heading in to final Kepka. Yes, indeed. And there's the flash. GG for Shadow Sid. Dance and yes. Mog doing mm -hmm. work. Dancing until the world ends, and Shadow Sid is done. GG. Yes, GG's to him indeed. That is good enough for fourth place and a uh, very cool finish as uh, Green Monkey is in the final Kafka fight. Does have the uh, Jumper Mog, but uh, other than that is more or less the same. Jolly Green Ray has, has caught up quite a bit, as uh, always seems to happen towards the end of Worlds Collide races, and is working through uh, Tier 3. Youch! Green Monkey's Terra takes a big hit but hops back on her feet. Green Monkey having a lot of close, close call over in the final fight. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Green Monkey has really been living dangerously, but uh, it has been working out, has, has been able to claw through this uh, multi-tier battle and is uh, you know, very close to the promised land. He has to be like stressed out of his mind right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, this Kefka just has a grudge with Green Monkey's Terra. Takes her down again. You know, I'm realizing now the one thing that Sid had that none of the other runners had was a Mega Elixir from killing Magic Master. You're right. Dolly now heading in to Kafka proper. Yes, indeed. Meanwhile, we have our uh, 
Second on stream finisher, Shadow Sid. Sid GG, how do you feel about the seed? Thanks, that was an interesting one for sure. Definitely interesting. Um, which, you know, can mean good and bad, it's certainly good for us viewers. What does interesting mean to you as a runner of this seed? I had like one strong character and uh, I was just kind of living on a prayer for most of it. Some of the RNG was just nasty, nasty mean to me today. It was rough and, you know, any any seed with a uh, required strago is going to be a little spicy. How did you feel about the uh, the start of the sea, the first few checks and characters and espers? I felt like I had a good plan. It was fairly linear. Like, um, you know, just kind of do the start the Narsh thing, go do the normal checks, hit up Hera's thing, go back to Narsh and see what I got. But uh, later on, <laughs> it was like, find the character. That was That was getting rough. Oh no! Ooh, green monkey. Sorry, it looks like a green monkey took a wipe on Kefka. Mm. And he like yeah. had it too. Yeah, that was a close one. Oh well, it is a new um, Kefka for yeah. sure. Uh, you know, I, everyone like seemed so to have tomorrow. have troubles with uh, the final battle. Was I the only one that dipped into uh, the dragons ahead of time? Because I was not feeling my levels going into Kepka Tower at 710 without doing a couple dragons first. I think e everyone got around to the Skull Dragon in Ruined Narsh. And a few of you did the Opera House Dragon. Uh, Jack did a dragon in KT. But I mean, every, everyone, I assume your levels were like low 30s. Everyone seems to be pretty low okay. level in the final fight. It was 35 most, and I think Tyrell was at 36. Ooh, Jolly Green is in a trouble too. Um, how, how does your uh, strategy change going into KT with, with lower levels? Um... It depends on what I got. So if my equipment's good and like defensive good, sure. Um, I'll just kind of wing it. If my offense is rough, rough, I need to, you know, kind of boost more levels than what I'd want to be. Like Terra was fine, but the other ones, I was like, this is going to be nasty if I don't give them a few more levels of dragon. Because I've gotten into Kefka's Tower with, you know, great offense and great defense before in low, you know, low 30s and been fine. But I prefer to be in there closer to 40 if, you know, the, the items aren't lining up. That makes total sense. Uh, meanwhile, GG to Jolly Green Ray for uh, finishing this race with a time of 2 hours, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Um, oh yeah, Schwantz, got, got to call out, uh, you were the only runner to defeat Magimaster. And that was very impressive for the viewers. I mean, I had uh, yeah. Umaro. Might as well go. For... Slapped him with a, a pearl right off the bat. And I was like, oh, let's see if Umaro can finish this one out. Yeah, de definitely the, the people's champ for uh, for that Magimaster Master kill. Um, did you ever uh, find the dragon horn in the sealed cave? Yes. Okay. I never found dragon boots anywhere. Uh, they they were for sale in a few places. Uh, yeah, I, I every just, other runner on stream ended up with a dragoon mod. Uh, I was looking, but I wasn't looking hard because Terra was just tearing stuff up. Makes sense. The um, the Opera House and the uh, the Hyden Cave were the two places that I would like to discuss. If you saw those on stream. Yeah, I, uh, lay it out for us. Uh, what the hell were those monsters? <laughs> they were targeting the everybody by speed for my smoke bomb. Twice. The outsiders were brutal for, for everyone in the Opera House. Uh, at, at least three of the runners got, got KO'd by 
throwing shurikens and ashuras and stuff. That was a mean, mean random battle. Like uh, everybody I queued up with uh, smoke bombs, they just hit them in order so nobody was getting them. <laughs> Please stop. That was so rude. And I think like that's the meanest you could possibly get in the rafters. But once you got past the rafters, the boss was free. Yeah, just sketch him and keep on going. And then I think I was counting in Hydon Cave. I got the exact same room off of a tile five times in a row. And then it gave me a different room, and then it alternated between those two rooms five times in a row. It just really wanted to be stuck there. I mean, Ebbets Rock is, is the worst check in the game. Yeah. IMO. Um, but yeah, it can be very, very frustrating. But um, you, certainly, you certainly pulled it back and uh, had a very impressive finish. Um, and used dance to great effect, which is always fun to see. Yeah, that was fun to use. I didn't even check most of the dances, just once I found a couple good ones. I alternated. Mega Man, any other questions? Uh, not really. All right, Sid, any final thoughts? Uh, no, shout outs to, to Jack and Dustin for sure for doing real close finishes on that. They have funners to go up against, for sure. But it was a fun one. I uh, enjoyed this race. So, GG's everybody. Yes, DGG's. Um, glad you had fun. Certainly had fun watching it. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us uh, here on this uh, weekly community race. Appreciate everyone who uh, stuck around to, uh, to hang with us and enjoy some Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide. Do want to uh, call out, once again, the, uh, the people behind the scenes making this possible. Um, Brianna Fofana rolled the seed, this this gem of a seed, um, and is the restreamer to uh, make it all happen, wrangling four different screens and uh, all of us chatting. We had the Schwantz, our tremendous tracker, keeping track of uh, all the chaos going on, and uh, Mega Man joining me in the virtual commentator's booth, uh, and of course, the runners themselves, Jolly Green Ray, Shadow Sid, Green Monkey, Jackamus Wedge, Give them all a follow, if you're so inclined, um, and, uh, you know, enjoy the fantastic Worlds Collide content that they provide and that we provide and that we will continue providing in a uh, more or less weekly fashion. Mega Man, any uh, final thoughts on this community race? No other than... It was a mean feat, and, and our runner is powered through. They absolutely did, and it was uh, super fun to watch. Hope uh, everyone watching had a good time, and uh, GG, I think that'll do it for us. You might have one person wanting to enter. Oh, sorry, I heard something else? Uh, I was saying Jolly. I was hopping in for an interview if you wanted to interview. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what a uh, premature goodbye. Sorry about that. Let's get uh, let's get Jolly Green Rain here. Jolly Green, are you here? Jolly? Hello? You there? He looks like he's in. He's in, but it doesn't look like he is currently at the mic. Well, you know, I can wait. Be curious to see uh, their thoughts on uh, the very 
challenging uh, final battle that everyone dealt with, though I think Jolly Green Raid actually dealt with it the most efficiently. Didn't seem to have any real hiccups that I saw. No, he didn't seem to uh, have any trouble. Hello, Jolly Green Ray. Almost. Hello. We have uh, Green Monkey in the chat. Green Monkey, GG, how are you? Good, good. Thank you. I had a sad forfeit. <laughs> that was a that was a truly brutal finish. Uh, it, it was it was difficult to watch. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I still have not figured out how to master Kevka, uh, sadly. But uh, it was fun up until that point. I had lots of fun. <laughs> Yeah, how'd you feel about the seed? It was good. Uh, it was pretty challenging early, I feel like. Um, with, I don't know, I, I thought I was going to get forced into Magic Master at some point, uh, which was a really scary prospect. Uh, but then I was happy to find Gao over uh, at Mobliz or whatever. Uh, so that was good. Uh, but yeah, other than that, once it got going though, I mean, the actual working through the seed seemed easy enough. I just felt like I was definitely going to be weak when it came down to Kefka. Um, especially because I'm not, I haven't mastered the fight yet. So I like to be a little overpowered. If that makes sense. Uh, totally. And, oh. and this is definitely not a run that uh, gave you overpowered options. No, for sure. I just kind of like locked in that I was going to have a couple casters and a thrower and a jumper pretty early. <laughs> I just like hoped it was enough. I uh, There wasn't like a lot of Asper. I mean, there was some plus one magic power, I guess, Espers, but other than that, um, there wasn't a lot of stat boosting happening over there, at least that I saw. And you had a few close calls during the Kefka fight. It, and uh, you managed to recover from that. Yeah. And, but <laughs> I remembered Revify like <laughs> at the very last second uh, on tier three. I was like just about dead there too. too. But and then Kefka. That was itself. clutch. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kefka itself obviously. Uh, yeah, the Havoc Wings. So many Havoc Wings. Yeah, Kepka really seemed to have a, a grudge against your Terra. Yeah, I I just she was the only one with a cure three, so I was like just desperately trying to get her up. But I, don't, but I mean, it was no one was surviving one havoc wing, so I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to get like a little traction, and then I was gonna hopefully do a little bit more damage and then break out the thunder shields, but uh, yeah. <laughs> couldn't quite get the traction. So it goes. Well, it does, uh, uh, the seed did want you to use, uh, the jump command, it seemed like. Gave, gave you all the tools very yeah. early. How do you feel about a Dragoon build? I love it. I don't know why, but... <laughs> Happy to hear it. <laughs> I just love Dragonhorn. Yeah, I don't know. I got, I saw Pearlands and Boots in, uh, Almarook, so I snagged those up and then got lucky and got a dragon horn like immediately and uh, <laughs> uh wherever that terror check that name escapes me right now uh, sealed cave so, yeah yeah okay, yeah so i was pretty lucky but uh, but so, I, I don't know it just feels like that's what mob's good for so <laughs> jumping around well it yeah. works to, to great effect 
yeah, it was uh, but fun overall. <laughs> I haven't got to do many of these community races, so this was cool. I get to watch them on YouTube afterwards, but that's about that. <laughs> well, we're ha happy to have you. Yeah, it was thanks. fun. Mega Man, any uh, any questions? Uh, no other than in reiterating that clutching up from, from those disasters is not being absolutely stressed out of your your mind, but <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> losing my head. Um... Just hoping to get something going. I mean, I was watching the Discord. I feel like I saw like some people finish. And I was like, all right. I, uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> I felt like less like um, this is the end of the world. I was like, oh, I've already kind of lost, I guess. But man, I really wanted to finish. But oh well. <laughs> well, it was a very impressive race, and even though you didn't. Uh technically finish you got you got so close that uh we felt all the highs and lows of victory and defeat <sighs> yeah i'll go cry myself to sleep tonight <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for having me guys absolutely Jeez. yeah it was nice having you let's see you again that's good well, we can try again with uh, Jolly Green Ray. Are you there? Um, Mr. Jolly? Yeah, I hear you guys, but nothing on, on here on my end. We can hear oh, you. Great. Yeah, you're live now. It's a pleasure to be with you guys, man. Um, so much fun. Yeah, GG. You know. What's up? I said, uh, uh, GG, how'd, how'd you feel about the seed? The seed was good. To do a couple terror checks first, I went to Esper Cave. Um, you know, I was feeling very good. Then I went to to Zozo and I ran into so there so that was my first reset um, I did a couple grind um, I did grind just to learn Bolt 2 I found the Thunder Shield early on actually two Thunder Shields so I thought maybe that could give me a little bit of offense with, um, with Terra and Monk yeah how did you feel about uh, that, that start Terra and Mog well Mog is um, a whatever start, but Terra is always a monster start, I feel. So um, seeing Terra off the bat gave me a lot of confidence in the seed. I mean, yeah, she's she's best girl for a reason. Of course. Um, um, and, you know, picking up Celeste later, um, I felt really, really good going forward. And then, um, how, how do you uh, feel about uh, Dragoon builds, getting uh, all the pieces for the jump command to pop off? As soon as I find a dragon horn, um, I'm on. Some fixed dice that I was never able to equip throughout my run, but... Overall, it was okay because I ended up buying a Pearl Lance for Mog, so he was doing some okay damage for me. Um, actually, the first couple of fights, Mog was was uh, my biggest DD. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever ended up using the fixed dice. Okay, so that's refreshing. At least it wasn't a waste on my end. And um, after the Pearl Lance, um, eventually, just during the tier fight, I was kind of panicking on tier 3. Because um, I didn't have any. Uh, sorry, you, you dropped dropped for a little bit there. Yeah, I feel like um, I struggled a little bit on the third tier of the Kefka Tower fight. 
because I only mm-hmm. had elemental memory. Basically, what they what, what they had. They gave them on them. They made a jump with them. Well, it worked out, and it was a, a very uh, strong finish. Uh, Mega Man, do you have any uh, questions for for Jelly Green? Uh. No, other than you did great, and and hope to see you back. Started streaming. Um, shout out to Will Jones. Um, I found him on YouTube, and since I joined the community, um, it's just been a pleasure, man. Um, super respectful, extremely, extremely um nice. Um, there's not enough good things I can say about this community. I'm, I'm glad that I could be a part of it. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Well, any uh, any final thoughts on uh, this community race? You know, besides the fact that um, I still feel like I'm kind of a rookie, I've been running this game now, I want to say, um, well, since I started during the latter races, I think I jumped in about week four, so I've probably been been streaming now for um like maybe four or five months or so um so i just hope that i continue improving and i start getting some stronger sub to our runs in the future i i I believe it and it's all you know just game knowledge and and practice there's a lot to learn with this game oh yeah it's excited it's it's too much fun to to not keep on playing so i'm definitely here to stay Awesome. Great to hear. Well, and I, I think with that, I don't want to be premature again, but I, I think uh, that is the conclusion of our community race. Uh, I think it was a fun one. I certainly had fun. Mega Man, how do you feel? I feel great about the seed and the the growing community. Totally agree. Uh, all right. Well, again, thank you for our runners. Thank you, uh, Brianna. Thank you, the Schwantz. Thank you, Mega Man, for for joining me. And uh, thank you for everyone in chat who who watched and uh, you know participated in uh, in the community race. That's what community is all about. So, uh, GG, and uh, thanks for watching. GG's all, and I'm um, gonna see y'all next week. Oh, yeah.